Good evening. It's Monday the 12th of December and it's time for the news on RIC2. United Nations emissary on Cyprus, Espan Bath Ida, has said that there are ways to modernize security arrangements in Cyprus in a way that would accommodate the security of both sides. In an interview with the Financial Times newspaper, Ida said that this can be done in a way that the security of one would not be a cause of insecurity of the other. Ida explained that the Greek side maintains that it would prefer the end of the system of guarantees and the Turkish troops to leave Cyprus. The Turkish side, he added, has always been that the system of guarantees should be continued, at least in order to see that the new system of federation works, because they feel a certain responsibility to the Turkish Cypriots. Meanwhile, Turkish Cypriot leader Mustafa Kenji said that the termination of guarantees cannot be made from the first moment of a solution. In an interview with Greek state television, Akinji said that the issue of guarantees could be reviewed after some time, for example, to be reconsidered after 15 years when three presidential terms will have been completed. Akinji also said that in an international conference on Cyprus, other parties could be invited, such as the European Union, but he insisted that their role will be a secondary one. The government has strongly criticised opposition parties for voting down the legislation for the reform of the public administration without even caring to make any counter-proposals. Assistant Minister attached to the President, Costantinos Petridis, told a press conference that the opposition parties found inadequate and not daring enough the government's proposals on reforming the public service, but they did not make their own proposals and voted against the entire legislation. He added that the government is ready to propose new legislation, provided the parties will come forth with proposals on the issue, saying that radical and progressive changes cannot be made by just uttering slogans. He said that Parliament missed the opportunity to put an end to the shortcomings of the public service. Opposition Vigo deputy Marinos Mushutas retorted that the executive that the legislation submitted to Parliament contained unconstitutional provisions. Transport Minister Marios Dimitriadis has blamed Parliament for the freezing of plans to develop the port and marina at Larnaca. Dimitriadis said that during the budget debate, opposition parties blocked funds earmarked for the payment of consultative firms which had worked for the plans and the preparing of legal documents. He added that the action of opposition parties have discouraged investors interested in the project. Dimitriadis also accused the opposition parties of blocking funds earmarked for the development project at Trodos and urged them to reconsider their decisions if they really want development projects to continue. A bomb went off outside the residence of a public prosecutor in Paphos last night, causing extensive damage to the house. Police said the explosive device was placed on the terrace of the house at the suburb of Emba and went off shortly after midnight. The explosion wrecked the entrance and smashed windows. The prosecutor, his wife and one of their children were in the house at the time. Police are investigating whether the explosion is connected to court cases in which the prosecutor presented the government's case. Transport Minister Marios Dimitriadis accused the local Paphos bus company of declaring an unjustified and unneeded strike affecting public transport. The company said it decided to go on strike because the transport ministry had refused to fund the renewal of the company's buses. Dimitriadis dismissed the accusation, saying that the ministry had given the go-ahead for the purchase of new buses, but asked that they should be depreciated before the end of the company's contract with the government in four years. He added that the government could not consent to a longer depreciation period, which would go beyond the length of the contract, as it would be exposed to charges of squandering public funds. The bus strike at Paphos affected thousands of students who used the bus to travel to their schools and back, and commuters going to work. An elderly man died late yesterday in Limassol after he was knocked down by a car as he was crossing a busy road. Police said that Ioannis Andreas, aged 81, was hit by a car driven by a 32-year-old as he was trying to cross Grivas Vienis Avenue. Police arrested the driver to help with their investigations into the accident, though it seems that he was not speeding. 
Investigators are checking whether darkness was a factor for the accident as the street lighting was not on at the time. Greek police found and detonated an explosive device that had been left outside the Labour Ministry in central Athens today after a newspaper was tipped off that a bomb had been planted. Police found the device in a rucksack propped up against the shutters of the ministry on a central thoroughfare in Athens. It was one of three suspect packages that police examined on the scene and then destroyed in controlled blasts. Earlier, a telephone call to a Greek newspaper had warned that a blast outside the ministry was imminent. There was no claim of responsibility for the incident. Such attacks are not uncommon in Greece, especially after 2010, when the government first adopted unpopular austerity measures associated with the country's bailout. The Syrian army and its allies made sweeping advances in Aleppo overnight, subjecting rebels in the city to the heaviest bombardment in days and pushing them to the brink of collapse. The Russian Defense Ministry said today that Syrian government forces control over 95 percent of Aleppo, and a Syrian general said that the operation is nearing its end. But rebel forces still control large swathes of the country, and Islamic State forces retook Palmyra yesterday. And now a look at tomorrow's weather. It will start out cloudy in the morning tomorrow with local rain and isolated showers and possibly snow on high Trodos peaks. Isolated rain will persist in the west and north and over the mountains in the afternoon. Winds will be moderate southwesterly to westerly. Force 4 becoming fresh to strong over windward areas in the afternoon. Force 5 to 6. The sea will be moderate. Temperatures will reach 17 Celsius inland and in coastal areas and 6 over the mountains. More rain and isolated showers are expected on Wednesday, but it will become mostly clear on Thursday. Cloudy spells are expected on Friday, which may lead to isolated rain and sleet on higher ground. Temperatures will drop further. That's all for today. Join us tomorrow again for more news in English. Have a very good evening.